Hey game makers, Pixelated Pope here, and welcome to part two of my tutorial on dealing with resolution and scaling in Game Maker. In this part, I want to cover the majority of the different facets of Game Maker that affect how your game displays and the functions available to manipulate them. By the end of this part, you should have the tools to implement your own dynamic resolution system in your game. There are actually several different elements in GameMaker that all come together to produce the final image you see when your game is running. These first two essentially represent the limits or boundaries of your game. The first, the display. As you might have guessed, this is the primary monitor of whatever device your game is running on. It doesn't matter if it's a Windows PC or an Android tablet. The display is vital because it places hard limits on how big our game can be, specifically how many pixels tall and wide, and the aspect ratio determines the shape our game must adhere to in order to avoid black bars in full screen. Now, as always, I recommend reading the documentation on all the display functions, but the two most important ones are display get width and display get height. There are a few other notable ones, but we'll touch on them later. If you know the display width and the display height, you can do all the calculations we talked about in part one, including finding the aspect ratio of the monitor and determining the proper sizing of your game for perfect scaling. The window is very similar to the display. In fact, when running on a mobile device or in full screen mode, your window sizes and your display sizes will be the same values, and similar functions exist to get those values. But unlike the display, the window can be resized. Again, read the documentation so that you're familiar with all the functions available to manipulate the window, because there's a lot, but there is a particularly useful one I want to point out. Window Center does what it says on the tin. It will center your window on the primary monitor. GameMaker will do this for you automatically when you first run your game. However, if you modify your game's width and height any time while the game is running, centering does not happen automatically. You'll need to manually center your game with this function. Now, one thing to be aware of, and this is why I wanted to call out this function in particular, is that you can't resize and center in the same step. I don't have a good explanation for you. I'm guessing there's just a delay between the window receiving the resize command and it actually resizing. Not really sure. But if you are manually resizing your window in code and want it to center itself afterwards, I recommend using an alarm to do the actual centering. Now that we've established the boundaries for our game, let's look at the parts that actually make up the game itself. The first is the application surface. Now, real fast, I just want to throw out this disclaimer. The application surface is a very powerful tool, and there's a lot you can do with it. This tutorial is going to assume we are letting GameMaker handle pretty much everything about the application surface, except for maybe the sizing. As such, for the purpose of this tutorial, the only applicable functions are the ones you are probably already familiar with. The application surface is just that, a surface. So you can get the width, the height, and resize it just like any other one. Simply pass in the keyword application surface as the index for the surface, and these functions behave exactly as you would expect. So what does it actually do? The application surface is the canvas for your game. Every time you use the draw event to draw a sprite or a background or a tile or even another surface, it's drawn to the application surface. One of the things that GameMaker does automatically with the application surface is it draws a surface scale to fit your window while maintaining the aspect ratio of your application surface, like so. This is assuming you haven't changed that setting in your game's graphics options, which I'm honestly not sure why you ever would. By default, your game window and application surface will always be the same size. But this scaling also happens when we move to full screen, and that is when we start to see black bars. There's obviously more we could discuss on the application surface, but let's move on to the next layer. I'll go into a bit more detail on this in the next part, but if you're worried about all this resolution stuff working properly in your game, you should be using views in every single room. Additionally, GM is capable of using multiple views, useful for split screen multiplayer and whatnot, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to assume the use of a single view. But what is the view? As many of you should already be aware, 
The view is essentially the camera in our game world, and you should be familiar with the variables that allow you to resize them, like view w view and view h view. It also determines what is drawn to the application surface. Again, this is assuming a single default view and default application surface behavior. If it's in the view, it's being drawn to the application surface and not simply drawn, it's automatically stretched to fit the application surface. However, unlike drawing the application surface to the game boundary, the aspect ratio is not respected and your view will be stretched to fill the entire application surface. As such, you should pretty much always make sure your view's aspect ratio matches your application surfaces, and in many cases, they should be the exact same size. Okay, last one. So we've got our game window with our application surface drawing the contents of our view to it, but there's one last layer that appears on top of this. Like the application surface, the GUI layer is a separate layer that sits on top of your game. If you have some UI elements that you want to always stay in the same place on the screen and on top of almost everything else, you should draw them using the draw GUI events. This will put them on the GUI layer and put them on top of anything drawn in the normal draw events. When drawing in the GUI layer, 00, 0 will always be the top left of your game screen and the bottom right will always be display get GUI width and display get GUI height, regardless of what your view is doing. The GUI layer can be resized. Like the view is scaled to fit the application surface, the GUI layer will stretch, disregarding aspect ratio, to fit your new scaled application surface in the window. So again, the aspect ratio of your GUI layer should match your windows and games aspect ratio. If it doesn't, your game will look normal, but your GUI elements will be squished or stretched, making your game look really ugly. Now, this is actually kind of cool. Your GUI layer can be as high res as your game window. So if your game's base resolution is 480 by 270 and your monitor is 1920 by 1080, your GUI layer can also be 1920 by 1080, making your HUD smaller and giving more room to the game. You could even let your players scale the HUD to their liking, anywhere between the resolution of the game window to the base resolution of the game. However, the same rules about pixel scaling apply, so make sure you keep the resulting scale locked to perfect multiples. So that was a lot of info. To summarize, I want to go end to end with you so you understand how every piece fits together in order to build what you see in your game window. So to begin, you have your room. In that room is a view. The contents of the view are drawn, stretched to fit to the application surface. The application surface is drawn to the window, scaled, respecting the aspect ratio. The GUI layer is then stretched to match the dimensions of the scaled application surface and drawn directly on top of that. Now that we are at least a little familiar with the different elements that control how GM game is displayed, we're ready to go into some actual code and start manipulating some of these things. In the next video, we'll build a demo app and start showing you the effect messing with each of these values can have on how your game displays. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, try hitting the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions, post them in the comments section below and I'll do what I can to answer them. Thanks for watching. Now go make something awesome.